Rome, the Eternal City. I had been working for a private security agency called Fidentia for a few months. The pay was lousy, but it had a huge advantage. Nobody there cared who I was or where I came from. Me and Malcolm, my boss slash roommate, were escorting yet another VIP to discover the wonderful views of Rome. Everything was going as planned. The guy didn't look like he wanted to talk, and we were more than happy to accommodate him. Then, as if reading my mind, Destiny decided to liven up the situation. thing I could complain about would be boredom. Kiddo. Kiddo, wake up. Five more minutes, Dad? Ten? Get up, sleepyhead. I need to leave for a while. Mm. Leave? Uh, I left something for you. It's in the kitchen. Dad? Dad? He's gone. You're still in bed? Didn't you say bye to your father? No. Oh, well, that'll teach you not to stay up so late with those stupid detective magazines you read. They're not stupid. When I grow up, I will be a great detective. All right, all right, take it easy. Breakfast is ready, but first, I'm sure you meant well when you decided to decorate the wall with that, that mural. But get rid of it now, please. But it looks great. Do I really have to? You have the nerve to complain? Tell you what, don't even dare come into the kitchen until you picked up all those clothes scattered around as well. But Mom... Bobby! He's gonna help me. Hi, Bobby! Did you sleep well? Come on, I know you're awake. I'm gonna tickle your tiny paws, you know. Little brat, don't you dare! And by the way, I never sleep. I stand guard. Oh, right. The garden went well then? Nothing to report, except for that rooster that keeps singing at 3 a.m. and the endless snoring of your father. <laughs> he almost sounds like a rusty muffler. So what's on the schedule for today? Shall we flush out a criminal gang? Search for stolen goods? A few chases? Hand-to-hand -hand fight? We need to tidy up the room. I love hand-to-hand... -hand. Uh, you call that a schedule? Let's hurry up! Dad promised me a surprise. Aren't you forgetting something? My notebook! I can't launch myself on a mission without my notebook. Bobby is my best friend. Are you serious? But I hate you. Oh yeah? Th then I hate you too. Bobby is my worst enemy. That's better.
a chore. Your stomach roars louder than me. Breakfast is my favorite meal of the day. I can't wait. All done? I warn you, I'll be checking later on. What smells so good? Your favorite breakfast. Pancakes with pistachio cream. Pistachios! I heard you talking earlier, and... Yeah, I mean, uh, about Bobby. <laughs> he is a good friend, I'm sure. But you, um... I mean, you know that he doesn't really... Don't you? Mom, I know that Bobby doesn't really talk. I'm not six. All right, all right. I just wanted to be sure. Sometimes your imagination confuses me. That's all. Your father left something for you on the table before leaving. he had to leave. He received an urgent call tonight while you were sleeping. I don't know exactly where they sent him this time, but he packed his luggage with light clothes. Probably someplace warm and exotic. He's gonna drink coconut milk with a straw. He will swim in the ocean or in the sea or in a river. I mean, knowing him, he's going to dive into the first patch of water he can find. And he's gonna romance all the ladies in town. He'd better keep his hands to himself. What a bummer I had to erase my painting. Sweetie, I don't want to limit you or curb your enthusiasm, but you see, you have many fine qualities. It's just that painting is not one of them. What good qualities do I have then? Well, you're creative, curious, you have a keen eye, and above all, you're tenacious. What does tenacious mean? Stubborn, but in a good way. Look! I see. Dad told me about the loose tooth. Did it hurt? Hurt? I never feel a thing. So it isn't because you were scared I'd pull it out that you didn't tell me, right? Mm, no, no, not at all. Hmm. Did you check if the tooth mouse came? I forgot. Hurry up. He usually leaves a penny under the pillow as payment. I need to complete some tasks for my initialization. Do you? Are you ready for anything to become a great detective? For anything and more. It's going to be tough. I like that. Twisted. All, all right. Full of dead ends and pitfalls. Oh. And above all, dangerous. Can't, can't you help me? Are you kidding? Your father would never speak to me again if I ruined your initialization. But you'll manage. I have no doubt. What's this? Terrific. She's right. Ugh, you two are boring. Dad left me some challenges to overcome. Something fun at last. Look, 
Bobby. A penny. This is the start of a real financial empire. Hmm. A force field bars the way. package. Such a long red scarf. Stop. You'll break your neck. I can't. I can't let Dad down. I... I did it! What do you think is on the videotape? It only says kiddo. Maybe it's the video of your first grade play. Mom laughed until she cried. You were an exceptional tree. You have such a powerful aura now. It's over 9,000. I'll go tell Mom. Mom, I did it! You did great. What did Dad get you? A pair of wonderful gloves, a long scarf, and a videotape. Oh, it's already time for the videotape. I was hoping he'd give you more time. Huh? Get ready and meet me in the living room. I'll turn on the VCR. They're a bit too big for you. I guess you can use them when you get older. What? What's on the tape? Listen to me now. It's not going to be funny, but your father thinks it's necessary. Even if I trust him, I don't agree. Let me ask you again. Do you really want to become a great detective? Y yes You don't look so sure. Yes, I want to. I want to find the criminals, fight them, and arrest them. If this is not just a game for you, one day you will really have to face them. Do you understand that? I got it. Who is he? He is one of the worst criminals in history. One of the meanest. Why are they interviewing him, though? People are weird. On the one hand, they do everything they can to forget about evil, and yet they're fascinated by it. And so it happens that thieves and murderers often make the front page, you know? They, they write books, they almost become legends. I... I don't like it. This man has hurt people? He hurt a lot of people, yes. But he is famous? There's no one in the world who doesn't know his name. That's not right. He... He scares me so bad. Me too. Look at his eyes. They're empty. You still don't know Nietzsche, but it is like gazing into the abyss while it gazes into you. I don't want him to be famous. People need to forget about him. Sweetie, it's impossible. Every time people hear his name, they will remember what he did. Then I... I'll steal it from him. I'll steal his name and become the most famous detective ever. I will arrest anyone else like him. All of them. I'll be so famous, people won't think about him anymore. They'll think about me. That's not such a bad idea, you know. What? What's his name? 
Bundy! Uh, what? Mom? Bundy, get up! This is not the time for a nap. Ah, uh, I took a nasty blow to the back of my head. It hurts like crazy. On the other hand, he got the worst of it. Is... is he dead? Well, he doesn't look so good. He is... dead. Yep. Stone cold dead. He is dead! Do you get it? I get it. He's deceased, departed, taking a dirt nap, stiff like a board, running in the green meadows with his ancestors. I think I'm going to be sick. How come I don't hear the sirens yet? Nobody called the authorities? I showed my fake police ID around, told everyone to go home, that there's nothing to see here. Same old story. Great move. Now, stay there and breathe. I think about what to do. We were in Villa Borghese, in the city center. The authorities would get there at any moment, and I couldn't afford to be linked to a murder case. The evidence of my presence had to disappear. How you doing, Mel? Oh, I'm doing all right. Plus, it's such a beautiful day. What about you? How's everyone at home? Well, actually, I, uh... How do you think I'm doing, man? We have a shot that client who not only will be able to pay our day's wage, but who's probably gonna drag us with him to the grave! He was very much on edge, which made him temporarily unable to help me. Usually, Malcolm was calm and steady, but he looked in shock in that moment. Then again... The worst thing we usually had to deal with was a long-winded client. That was the first time we had to deal with a dead one. The Villa Borghese water clock. In the midst of all that green, it stood out. Majestic. Although the man had died almost instantly, his expression conveyed the anguished awareness of death. Hmm. The bullet caught him center mass. Judging by the angle of entry, it must have pierced his rib cage, torn right through his heart, and probably a lung. Here we go. I'm gagging. I can't see the exit wound, which means the bullet is still inside. Hmm. It's a pity we don't have time to extract it. Ugh. Malcolm, should you feel the irresistible impulse to throw up? Yes? Close your mouth and swallow. We don't want to flood the crime scene with fresh piping hot DNA, do we? You're Ugh, not helping. It wasn't the first time I'd found myself in such a situation. Once you got to that point, there was nothing else you could do for the victim, other than grant him one last act of kindness. An expensive brand, as if to emphasize how rich the man was. At the same time, the lens was cracked, as if to emphasize how dead the man was. Comfortable for a sweltering summer day, but not so elegant. The man spent the morning taking pictures of everything he found interesting. Including me, apparently. What are you doing? That's evidence. Don't worry. I always wear gloves precisely for such eventualities. You mean you're used to it? Well, we'll talk about that later, okay? The victim's ID. The blood, still fresh, partially covered the personal details. But one thing caught my attention anyway. We'll get a life sentence! Look at the bright side. We won't need to raise the money for rent anymore. Listen, didn't this guy tell us his name was Philip Sanders? Yes, why? Well, the few letters I can make out don't match. But why provide us with false identification? We were just escorting him around the city. I have every intention of finding out. I prepared to rummage through the corpse's pockets. It was still warm. And I felt irrationally guilty, as if he could possibly care about it. A shaped metallic wire. My instinct urged me to pick it up, even though I didn't have the slightest idea of its function. I don't like what you're doing at all. Neither do I. Now, do us by the favor. Stand guard, and be sure to freak out if you see a patrol car. Freak out? More than usual, I mean. Just taking a selfie at a crime scene. What a horrible person.
So that little object was some sort of release key for the camera. The film roll was intact. I vaguely hoped that the victim might have immortalized something useful as well, so I decided to keep it. There was still a problem to solve before I could duck out. I couldn't take the camera with me. The tourists repeatedly took pictures, and in case an eyewitness turned up, I had no doubt they would describe the device to the authorities. I had to leave it at the crime scene. But at the same time, the film roll's absence had to be justified. What are you doing? I removed the roll containing the pictures of us. Then I placed the camera near the string. I can see that, but why? This way the police will think the film was ejected from the device due to the impact, ending up in the sewer. Well, that's clever. It almost seems like you're used to these kinds of situations. Now listen to me, Mal. I can't let the police find me here. They'd be asking questions I couldn't answer. What kind of questions? Such as, what's your name? Huh? I'll explain everything, I, I promise. But for now, I gotta leave. And you got to do me a huge favor. I'm afraid of what you're about to ask me. I was never here. But we come here almost every day. We don't know each other. We live together. You pay me rent, you... And you've never, and I mean never, heard of a certain Lazarus Bundy. I wish that were true. Now, for once in my life, I'm serious. <sighs> All right, get out of here. I'm going to regret this, I know, but just leave. <laughs> You're the best. That's how it began. With a man who was perhaps using a secret identity, murdered in the very city center of Rome. Well, what happened to my cover? Would my pursuer track me down after five years on the run? In order to prevent that, I needed to solve the case before the police could trace it back to me. Hand them the killer, have them close the file, and get back to anonymity. At that moment, I couldn't imagine that the murder would lead me around the world again, dragging me into one of the greatest adventures of my life. <laughs>